Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. I'm not in New York, not in Philadelphia, and not even in London. I'm in the English countryside. As you guys know, I come here every uh, December to catch up with the family. Uh, my wristwatch check is one of the watches I'm talking about today. I apologize if the sound is that there's a bit of wind. It's cold, it's damp, uh, it's windy. It's that classic British weather that I love so much. Couldn't be happier. Um, but today we're gonna discuss uh, G-Shock. And first, let's roll the intro, then I'll give a little bit of history and context, why the G-Shock is so big, and then following that, some suggestions for those with a smaller wrist, or if you want something a little bit more discreet, then this is for you. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. Now before we get into this, we should make the distinction between some of the smaller G-Shocks and many offerings from Casio that look or are styled in a similar way. For example, the W735H1A5 at around 30 bucks may have the same complications, look and feel of a G-Shock, and it is a cracking watch, don't get me wrong, but it's not a true G-Shock. For those not familiar with the innovative G-Shock history, it's a watch that changed the world with its extreme toughness and, as the name implies, resistance to gravity and shock. The G-Shock was conceptualized in 1981 by Casio engineer Kiko Aibe when he accidentally dropped a pocket watch gifted to him by his father and thus breaking it. This incident sparked the idea to create a watch resistant to shocks and the creation of the G-Shock was conceived. It was designed to have a triple 10 resistance, meaning it would have a battery life of 10 years, a water resistance of 10 bar and could survive a fall from 10 feet. This took Kiko over 200 prototypes, endless extreme testing, and several years before the 10-layer concept protecting the quartz timekeeping module was born. Finally, in 1983, the first G-Shock, the DW5000C, was launched. Since then, it has been adopted by military, extreme sports enthusiasts, fashionistas, celebrities, and outdoor adventurers as the go-to watch when the tough gets going. However, most often G-Shocks are on the larger side, as you can imagine due to their robust design, despite their relatively low weight. But if you desire one or require one for a more modest wrist, or perhaps just something a little bit more classically sized, then these are my five recommendations. So don't worry, there's no need to miss out. The first recommendation is a watch I have owned several times myself, but has sadly been discontinued. The Rise Man was a fun but highly practical twin sensor asymmetrical design that placed the sensor on one side, giving it a very cool and distinctive look. Inevitably, the twin sensor gave way to the full triple sensor, or known as the ABC, and thus the Rise Man became outdated. But just like the Terminator, it may be old, but it's far from obsolete. It featured an altimeter and barometer, along with all your typical G-Shock functions and deadly accuracy. The original GW9000-92001CR had a charming red framed dot matrix that looked a little bit like a radar to display the atmospheric pressure tendency graph. Certainly a handy watch to have while on adventures, and for me it was highly accurate in predicting weather. It was also 200 meters water resistant with an auto EL backlight and afterglow, so more than perfectly capable for diving too, although not intended as such. The Tuff Solar had an extremely handy power reserve function, approximate battery life of nine months on a full charge without further exposure to light via the module 3147. So while it sounds like an impressive 46 mm watch, it wore a lot smaller and these days has become something of a collector's item with steadily rising prices. There are a slew of limited editions still on the used market from $400 and upwards. Just check out listings from Japan on eBay to see what I mean, and you will find many interesting colors and designs, and some even from new old stock. 
Next, we have an enduring and extremely competitively priced classic. Ranging from $50 to $100, the original Mudman G9001V is a throwback to the 80s in style with a symmetrical 46mm case that wears extremely well on a slender wrist. I myself have owned and enjoyed the military version, which is the G9000MS1CR. This variant had a blacked out negative screen and black pushes rather than the traditional red. Like the Rise Man, we have another retro sci fi looking watch, but this time in a more circular style. In terms of functionality, along with all your typical G-Shock complications, this is a battery-based module 3031 and also features a 48 city world time and 200 meters water resistance. But what makes this watch so special and later adopted for military use is the super useful countdown timer that has a start time setting range from one minute to 24 hours with an auto repeat and a progress beeper. This along with special buttons uh, equipped with extra gaskets to protect against mud and sand. The buttons therefore will be snug and slightly harder to push in order to avoid accidentally being pushed during a mission. Naturally this made it perfect not just for military use but also being utilized as a serious beta watch when doing exercise. Our third watch is one I reviewed rather recently in a video and after enjoying it very much myself has become a permanent part of my wife's watch collection. But don't let that confuse or disparage you. The G-Shock Mini GMN5501DRJ was not intended just for ladies, it is in fact a unisex watch. It remains in my opinion one of the most underrated models from the brand and combines a historic design with a modern affordable twist. The G-Shock Mini was first released in the late 90s following the success of the 1994 Baby G series that were aimed at the younger and female market. The G-Shock Minis are 30% smaller than your regular G-Shock and were originally intended for women, however they were later released in unisex variants, especially intended for people who have smaller wrists. The important thing to note here is how they still retain the 10 layers of G-Shock protection but in a more compact form. The G-Shock Mini I reviewed is extra special however as it takes inspiration from the second generation of early 80s G-Shocks that was famously worn by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 1987 movie The Running Man. This gives the watch a very lovable brutalist style with angular edges and a futuristic aesthetic that lends well to a more compact 41mm size. The battery powered module 3025 provides all the standard functions along with a world time and an easy legible dot matrix section at the top of the main display. This makes it great for a travel watch as you can choose to display the day and date or a second time zone which is just great for everyday practicality. There are several lively coloured versions but the glossy all black variant I reviewed matches well with almost any attire except obviously super formal functions of course. It is also worthy to note it has one of the best negative displays I have ever experienced from the brand so far. These G-Shock Minis can be picked up via eBay or several reputable online sellers from Japan and this is because they were never released internationally but at around $100 they are extremely cool watches indeed and well worth every penny. Now we come to something slightly different. I had to include an Annie Digi option for those that still like to read traditional watch hands but also require the toughness and essential functions of a G-Shock. The AWGM100B-1A is an update of the previously and highly successful AWGM100 that was originally released in the early 2000s. While it is 46mm in diameter at its widest point, it is one of the most smaller wearing G-Shocks out there and I can personally attest to it on my 6.25 inch wrist. It just simply wore wonderfully. The hands have lumi bright luminescence and underneath them placed like a traditional chronograph are three circular displays. 
These are very effective, giving the wearer all the information needed, such as calendar, seconds, and even a second time zone with its world time function simultaneously. Maybe this watch's best and most compelling attributes are the multi-band atomic timekeeping for perfect accuracy and the solar-powered 5230 module. Along with a 200 meter water resistance, it features extra magnetic resistance compared to your typical G-Shock, making it a great tool, especially for today's ever-increasing electronic dependent world. In terms of style, its case shape is undoubtedly based on the classic DW6900, but with a modern layer dial in a compact layout. At around 100 bucks, it packs a hell of a punch in terms of usability in a balanced size. Last but by no means least, and without a shadow of a doubt the greatest and most important series of G-Shocks ever made, the DW5600 family is still the king of G-Shocks and has only got better as the brand keeps introducing new functions, cool new designs and new materials too. It also happens to be the most faithful to the original 1983 first G-Shock. But not only that, the DW5600 is the most compatible with almost any wrist. But 37 years later, it has earned more achievements than any other watch from the brand. It's a cinematic icon in countless movies and one of the most worn watches in space, being officially flight qualified by NASA for space travel. This G-Shock earned the Guinness World Record for the heaviest vehicle to drive over a watch. They drove a 24.97 ton truck over the Casio G-Shock DW5600E-1. The G-Shock is the first and only watch by any company being able to withstand this challenge. But beyond its illustrious achievements, the sheer endless plethora of choices is unbeatable. From metal to bright translucent resin, as well as a massive choice of functionality with versions containing the latest high-tech Bluetooth, GPS wave scepter, and solar-powered radio control accuracy, it's simply hard to beat. I have owned many different versions of these over the years, and by far the one I keep coming back to and use every single day during my cardio is the quintessential DW5600-E. Faithful to the original, its matte black resin case and no-nonsense square look to me is what G-Shock in its purest form is all about. With a highly dependable module 3229, and a super light weight of only 53 grams, it boasts 200 meters water resistance in a 42 millimeter case that wears almost as small as the G-Shock Mini. But the best thing is, typically priced around 50 bucks, it's the ultimate affordable go-to option and not the end of the world if you lose it. Its 80s utilitarian shaped square case has aged amazingly well and will remain a timeless classic, one I believe any watch collector should consider. And there it is. One thing I, I gotta say is that it's one of the most fun watches. Um, it's such a capable watch. It, it, there are a few watches out there like it. You, you put, strap it on, you just don't have to worry about it. It's one of the most useful as well. For me, the DW5600 uh, is the quintessential G-Shock. I think it's closest to the original. It's, it's a true tool. If they made a version of this as a mini option, I would get it in a heartbeat. I know there is a mini uh, option, but it's, it's a little bit more kind of fashionable. It's not as um, tooltastic, for lack of a better expression, than this. There's also a, a very similitude about it. Even the most biggest watch snobs have some degree of respect well not all of them but for the g-shock and understandably so it's one of the most accessible iconic watches anybody can afford really another reason this is one of my favorites is that it's also moddable you see i have the nato strap adapters from j and k well you can even bling them out if you really want to not my cup of tea obviously i prefer it in this way it's almost like a seiko in the way you can customize it i've even seen some of the metal ones having engraving work on it which is kind of cool you know you guys know i had the metal one for a while it's a little bit too heavy. If I was kind of babying it, which is strange. To me, that's not what a G-Shock 
or at least in my collection that's not the role I wanted it to play and thinking back it's actually traveled with me pretty much everywhere um, I, I chuck it in a bag don't have to worry about it if I'm I don't know doing some traveling I take it with me uh, it's it's light, uh, it's small, it's compact. I'm gonna get back indoors. It is absolutely <laughs> freezing out here. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Please do nominate your favorite G-Shock for the smaller wrist in the comments. Any suggestions, let's try and help out as many as we can. Stay tuned for more videos from England and of course London. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always guys, I will catch you in the next one hopefully a little bit warmer <laughs> okay ciao now before i go guys i just want to quickly tell you about this extremely cool app that watchbox have launched this is my own personal go-to app for everything watch related using the app you can keep track of the real-time value of your watch collection you can store watches in your digital watch box and even try on watches using an augmented reality so don't miss out and please go to the app store and download it today you can access all of my latest videos right there in the app itself. And if you haven't already, please follow me on the official Urban Gentry Instagram and of course the Facebook UGWC. But most importantly of all, keep it positive, onwards and upwards.